The Yumi Digi X is one of the latest smartphones from a company you've probably never heard of. But if you're in the market for a cheap phone with great hardware, maybe that should change. Is it excellent? Does it exceed expectations? Is it the exact budget phone for you? I'm CE Tech Dude, and this is the Yumi Digi X review. First, let's get the tech specs out of the way. This phone's powered by a MediaTek P60 processor with 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage that you can supplement with a micro SD card. It's unlocked and has a ton of LTE bands that make it the perfect smartphone to use on any US GSM carrier. You can also use two SIM cards with LTE enabled at the same time, or you can use one SIM card and one micro SD card. Moving on to the hardware, the phone feels premium in the hand and has a nice weight to it. The back is plastic and has a black with red accent color scheme, which I actually think looks pretty good. It also comes in a bluish color scheme as well. The sides of the phone are metal, and the phone comes with a screen protector installed to protect the fragile glass in front. No Gorilla Glass here. It also includes a rubberized case in the box. There's a USB-C port on the bottom and a headphone jack on top. The front of the phone packs a 6.3 inch 720p AMOLED screen and it's really a beautiful display. Colors are bright and vivid and has deep black levels. It's enough to make me forgive the lower resolution. The screen gets very bright but not very dim which can make nighttime usage a little bit annoying. Being a 720p screen you will of course be limited to 720p on YouTube and this phone along with other Yumi Digi phones I've tried does not have the required Widevine DRM license in order to play other streaming media in high resolution. So that means if you use Netflix or Amazon Prime, you will be stuck at 480p streaming, which is a real shame since the display is so nice and high resolution content looks great on it. I also wish this phone had a native always on display to take advantage of the AMOLED screen, but you'll have to settle for lift to wake instead. There's a notification LED on the top, but it's only red and it's not very bright. The Yumi Digi X only has one speaker on the bottom that's down firing. It gets really loud, but it's not great quality. But you definitely will not miss any notifications. As far as software goes, this phone is running a pretty stock version of Android 9 Pie. However, the software just doesn't feel polished at times. I mean, it does feel snappy when using it day to day, but some things just don't work. Like the dark theme that only applies to the notification shade instead of the entire skin, which would be a real treat with the AMOLED screen. The battery utilization not being reported in the system settings is another feature that just doesn't work. Yes, this can be overcome using an app like AccuBattery, but it would be nice to have it working natively. But Umi Digi does seem to be listening to feedback and will hopefully optimize some of the software features in a future update. The gaming on the Umi Digi X is great, and it has no problems running newer games like Call of Duty in medium settings. Fortnite is not supported on this phone, unfortunately. The fingerprint sensor on this phone is built into the display, similar to that Galaxy S10. When I first got this phone, I really did not like the fingerprint sensor. It would miss about 95% of the time, but Umi Digi came through quickly and fixed the sensor with a software update, and now it works pretty much every time for unlocking the phone. As of this review though, the fingerprint sensor cannot be used for anything other than unlocking the phone. It just doesn't work in any apps that can use fingerprint authentication, such as banking apps or eBay. This phone packs four different cameras, three on the back and one on the front, and they are all okay. The main shooter is a 48 megapixel camera with an f1.8 aperture. It also has a two times telephoto lens and a wide angle camera. In good lighting, all the cameras do a pretty good job, but in low light, they're all pretty noisy. The main camera has a pretty wide aperture, so it does let a lot of light in, but the lack of OIS makes it hard to take non blurry pics in low light. The wide angle camera also distorts the edges of the pictures and the coloring is off. The call quality and speakerphone work well on this phone, and I had no issues with people being able to hear me or with me being able to hear them. The LTE radio also seems slower on this phone than other phones I've tried, and I get about half the speed that I normally get on using my other phones on T-Mobile. Thankfully though, signal strength is fine, and this phone offers both Wi-Fi and Volt. For battery life, this phone packs a 4150 milliamp hour battery, and it's more than enough to get through a single day on heavy usage. The phone does support quick charging and will charge to full in about an hour and a half. Okay, my friends, I think the last question is, would I recommend this phone to you? 
At the price point it's at, I think it's a really good value. It's got great hardware with great software most of the time. And it's a decent buy at the price. I just hope that UmiDigi continues with the software updates to optimize the software experience and it'll be an even better value. As always guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below and you just got CE Tech. See you next time. Thanks.